pivot tables are a super powerful tool because they take data that looks like this and turn it into a table that looks like this. And pivot tables do so with a couple of clicks and without any formulas. So stick around to the very end because we're gonna cover how to create a pivot table, populate it with data, and manipulate that data to drive insights. Let's get started right now with this intro to Excel pivot tables from How to Analyst. To create a pivot table, navigate to insert in the ribbon and click pivot table. And this brings up a menu specifying where you want to locate the pivot table. Excel defaults to adding your pivot table to a new worksheet, and it's a good idea to have your data and pivot table on separate worksheets. And Excel has already highlighted the range of data that I wanna use for this pivot table, and that looks good. I'm gonna ignore everything else on this menu and click okay. And you can see that the pivot table is created for you on a new sheet called sheet one. And it's really that easy to create a pivot table, so congratulations to you. And if you're getting an error and you haven't made it to this step, I have an entire video on fixing pivot table problems, which I'll add on the screen. And this is what a blank pivot table looks like. And if you click anywhere in the blank pivot table, the field list appears on the right side of the worksheet. And one thing you'll notice is that the columns in your data set correspond with the fields in your field list. So the field list shows you all of the fields in your data set up top, and the areas section down below is divided into four sections filters, columns, rows, and values. And you pick the fields that you want to display by dragging them to the different areas of the field list. So when I drag sales USD into the values section, you see that the pivot table displays sales USD. And the revenue number that the pivot table is calculating here corresponds with the total revenue in my data set. And for now, I'm gonna right click on this number and select number format. And I'm gonna format the values as currency with zero decimal points and click OK. And we'll come back later to show some more options for pivot table values. And if you're enjoying this video, make sure you hit the like button. Thank you so much. Now I'm gonna drag customer name to rows. And you'll see that customer populates into the rows of the pivot table. And one cool thing about pivot tables is that the customers you see here are deduplicated. Our data over here lists Amazon several times, but it only appears once in the pivot table because pivot tables only show unique values when you drag a field to row or columns. Similarly, when I drag order date to columns, the date populates in the columns. And when I drag product name into filters, you'll see that the pivot table populates that field up here in the filter section. And we'll circle back on filters a little bit later. If you accidentally hide the field list, simply click on any cell in the pivot table Navigate to Pivot Table Analyze in the ribbon and click on Field List to restore it. And if you click on this gear icon over here, you have options for how you want to format the field list. For example, this option puts the field and areas section side by side. And to re anchor the field list, simply double click the top. Let's take a deeper look at the dates in the column and learn more about expanding, collapsing, and grouping. As you can see here, the pivot table automatically groups the dates into months. And if you want to see the actual dates that you see here in the source data, you can click the individual plus signs in the pivot table to expand each month. Or if you want to expand the entire section, make sure your cursor is located in the, in the section that you want to expand, navigate up to Pivot Table Analyze, and click Expand Field. And next to Expand Field is Collapse Field, which collapses all the fields, in this case back to the months that we originally had. And pivot tables can automatically assign groups, in this case Excel recognized that these were dates and grouped them into months. You can also manually update the groups, and assign different groups by clicking in Pivot Table Analyze and selecting Group Selection. In this example, Excel groups the, group the dates into days and months, but we want to see years and we don't want to see days. So I'll click on Years to select it and I'll click on Days to deselect it. And then I'll click OK. And when I collapse the field, you'll see that Excel grouped it by year and when I expand it by year and month. Pivot tables also let you group fields other than dates. So here I wanna group Amazon and website into a new group called online. So I'm gonna click on Amazon, press control to select website and select group selection in the ribbon. And Excel adds this new group called group one and a new field called customer name two. And we can easily rename this group one to online by typing over it and pressing enter. 
and we can rename customer name too by right clicking on our new online group and selecting field sightings. And here you can name it whatever you like. In this case, we're gonna call it customer category and click okay. Let's come back to the product name field that we dragged into filters and see what we can do with that. Items in the filter section of your pivot table allow you to filter your data. So I'm gonna click on this drop, drop down and select cold brew and click okay. And you'll see that the pivot table updates the data to only display for the cold brew product. And if I want to see which customer is selling the most cold brew, I can right click on the grand total, navigate down to sort and collect, select largest to smallest. And of course you can also sort smallest to largest. Now let's dive into the value section and see what else you can do with it. We've already dragged sales USD into the value section, but you can also add more fields. So now we're gonna grab quantity and drag it into the value section. And sometimes when you drag a field to values, it can default to count of instead of sum of. And to fix that, you just right click on a field, pan down to summarize value by, and select your desired option. You'll notice you've got a lot of options here by which to calculate values. For example, average, min, max, product, and more. And if you pan down to show values as, you can show values as a percentage of total. So when I click on show values as percentage of column total, the pivot table calculates the percentage quantity that each field contributes to the column total. And you probably notice that the values default to include sum of, count of, or whatever method by which you're summarizing values. And to get rid of this, you can simply delete the sum of and press enter but make sure you leave a space either at the beginning or at the end of the field name because you'll get an error message saying the pivot table field name already exists and there are a few other menu items to help with layouts and formatting that you'll want to know. Excel defaults to compact form, which is what you've seen throughout this video. Notice how in compact form, I have two fields in rows and they're displayed in one column. There are also tabular and outline layout options. When you navigate to design in the ribbon and click on report layout. And when I switch to tabular form, you see that those two fields are now in separate columns. And typically when you select tabular layout, you want to click on subtotals and select do not show subtotals. You also have the option to repeat item labels, which can be helpful at times. There are other design options in the ribbon that you can check out on your own. Moving over to pivot table analyze and options in the upper left hand corner. There are a lot of great options in here of which I will only highlight a few. Preserve cell formatting on update is a good feature to select because if you have your cells formatted a particular way and refresh without this selected, you're gonna lose that formatting and have to do the work again. And if you make changes to your underlying data, you've gotta click the refresh button to have those changes reflected in your pivot table. And I've included a link to this very file in the description of this video. And it's a great resource to practice pivot tables in a low stakes environment. So go check that out. It's based on the web and very easy to download and get your own copy. And the best way you can help me out is to let me know in the comments, what other videos would you like to see from me? Thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you next time.